All right. We will, you will have access to this recording after our webinar uh, tonight. So uh, if you do have to slip out early or you want to revisit some of the things we've talked about, by all means, you will be able to do that. So let's go ahead and jump in to our how to run an hour of code webinar. So we have a few things we want to get through in this quick time that we have together tonight. We're going to talk briefly about what is hour of code. We're going to talk about how you can pick an hour of code tutorial. You're going to be amazed at how many are actually available to you. There are so very many. Then we're going to give you a few tips for running your hour of code and some other ways to engage your students before we do a Q&A. Now, as we continue going, if you have got any questions, the best place for those is going to be in the Q&A section. Um, you can certainly have a chat going on in the, in the webinar chat, but if you've got questions that you want to make sure we don't miss, go ahead and toss those into Q&A. If I don't see them and it's something we should answer live, MR will interrupt me and let me know that I'm missing a question. All right, and MR just tossed the links for the slide deck into the chat. So if you would like to have the slides in front of you, and you might, there's a lot of links, you can go ahead and grab that link. All right, first things first, if you are not a Code HS teacher, we would love for you to take a moment to sign up for your free educator account by browsing to codehs.com slash sign up slash teacher. MR just tossed that link into chat as well. It just takes a couple of minutes to sign up. If you are signing up for the first time tonight, know that as you get into the other courses, uh, we do need to verify your account just to make sure we're giving solutions to the right to the right people, not a student. Um, but that usually does not take very long. So go ahead and take a moment to sign up for your Code HS account. One other side note, as you might be doing that, um, I love to mention too that I was a Code HS teacher for almost the entire time I was in the classroom. Uh, so I it was transformational for me. So I'm super excited to be here and talk Code HS with all of you this evening. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what is an hour of code. So really, the hour of code is a nationwide initiative started, oh my gosh, I think 2012, 2013, a uh, nationwide initiative to introduce students all over the U.S., all over the world, actually, to uh, this one hour of computer science and computer programming. And it's really meant to expose students to programming. Um, so the goals are having fun, getting kids excited about computer science, and encouraging students to sign up for CS courses. So Computer Science Education Week, the goal for the week is that we want to really expose more K-12 students to CS with the Hour of Code activities and tutorials. What this is meant to do is really to increase access and equitable access to computer science. Uh, in so many schools still, we're still facing an issue where simply students do not have uh, access to a computer science course. Some of them will not even know what computer science really is and what is programming. And so that's a real problem because if they don't know what it is, they don't know what they're missing and they don't, they could be missing out on something that brings them some real fulfillment in their life and, and really complete some career goals for them. So this is our goal for Computer Science Ed Week. So little fun fact about Computer Science Ed Week, it is held every December and it is held in recognition of Grace Hopper's birthday. So Grace Hopper was a mathematician and computer scientist who was involved in what is one of the first programmers in the Harvard Mark I computer and her birthday is on 12-9. So every week, that's why December was chosen for Computer Science Ed Week. And this year, Computer Science Ed Week is December 5th through the 11th. So when we're thinking about increasing access, one of the things we want to do is really start to think about those role models for kids. One of the things that is absolutely critical to getting kids involved and getting all kids involved, uh, no matter their, their uh, gender or their race, is seeing those role models who might look like them. And so it's important that we start to think about who those people are 
that uh, were pioneers in the field of computer science. So we just talked a little bit about Grace Hopper. Grace Hopper was one of the very first programmers for the Harvard Mark I computer. And then we have Clarence Ellis, who was another pioneer in uh, computer science. And he is uh, he was an important part of the computer supported cooperative work um, at uh, University of Colorado in Boulder. And uh, he also pioneered operational transformation, which is a set of techniques that enables real time collaboration of editing of documents. So I think we all know that we can uh, collaborate on docs now. Clarence Ellis was definitely one of the forerunners in that field. Evelyn Boyd Granville was a, uh, another computer scientist and mathematician who has performed real-time calculations for satellite launchings and studied rocket tra trajectories, try to say that 10 times fast. <laughs> and Miguel de Acasa was a very important computer scientist, pioneer, computer programmer, uh, in the, uh, sorry about that. I had to quiet down one of my own little uh, puppies who is listening to my uh, <laughs> my presentation tonight. But he was an important uh, Mexican American programmer who was involved in Linux and uh, developing many projects for that platform. So let's get into picking an hour of code tutorial. So with Code HS, we have a ton of different tutorials. I think I saw something that said we had over 20, but I feel like there's more now. Um, so some of them you can see on this screen, we've got programming with Carol the dog. If you're familiar with Code HS, you'll know Carol is our, uh, really our programming mascot. Carol is a dog that we teach to program. We teach Carol many different commands. There's a React Native, Creating Virtual Worlds, Web Design, Graphics with Tracy the Turtle, one of my personal favorites. I love the Python language. Punnett Squares, Pi Day, Generating Beats with Code is so much fun. You are going to love that one. Gener uh, generating Art with Code, Coding in Sports, Exploring the Blockchain. All of these are at varying levels. And teachers, if you do not have experience with coding and you feel like, oh my gosh, Lori, how am I going to figure this out. I'm going to show you how that can work for you too. So you can see all of the different Hour of Code options by following this link, codehs.com slash Hour of Code. Um, MR did just throw this into chat. And so I'm going to just browse out to this for a moment so you can see what we have available. This is our Hour of Code page. And you can see all of the different options here. You can filter by high school, middle school, interdisciplinary, new options, intermediate, advanced. So you can actually filter by all those different levels as well. Beginner, block coding, offline. And you can see how much we have here. We do have one, um, one uh, Spanish hour of code as well. You can see all the options. And as you look through these, you'll see the level for each of these Hour of Code options here as well. Um, digital Art and Pixels is so fun. Sorry, I got it all distracted when I saw that one. That's one of my favorites. Um, but there's so many here that you can choose from. This is one of the reasons why we like to point out Hour of Code 2 for other things besides Computer Science Ed Week. Of course, it's great. These are hour-long tutorials specifically made for CS Ed Week. But if you're starting a coding club, or maybe you're a math teacher who wants to get your kids excited about programming. This is another good way to integrate programming into your classes with these different tutorials. So this is going to be a great way to start searching these. And if I go all the way down to the bottom, actually, I'll go ahead and just choose offline. You can see we've even got offline options as well. So maybe you don't have computers for all your students or Maybe you have an internet outage on the day you want to do Hour of Code. This is always great to have these ready to go. Um, and uh, you can definitely take a look at these for uh, your Computer Science Ed Week as well. One of the things that I really like about the Unplugged is that we can really show kids that computer science is about so much more than being on a computer. It's really about problem solving and computational thinking, algorithmic thinking. 
Um, but this is a great way to do that with these different activities. Let's see, let's make sure I'm not missing anything. Oh, yeah, I showed you on the unplugged. So, and we'll pop back over to this in just a moment because I want to show you some of the other amazing things that are there for you. So when you're thinking about your hour of code implementations, um, there's a few different ways to consider how to do an hour of code. For many of us, the most common is this level one implementation where a teacher doesn't necessarily have to be CS. I should have changed that on the slide. It's a teacher. Classroom teacher leads an hour of code with their classes. Um, so really, you can choose one of those activities and you can absolutely just lead that with your class. We'll talk about how to do that in just a moment. Now, level two and level three are going to be a little bigger implementation of an hour of code. Um, that level two might be that you're hosting an hour of code for non-CS students. Maybe it's for a department-wide kind of code HS uh, hour of code event. So that's going to be a little bit more detailed. And maybe if you want to do a school-wide one, that's certainly going to be the biggest. But you could absolutely consider bringing in speakers, uh, bring in some industry speakers, have an assembly, and host a school-wide hackathon. It could be a lot of fun. And we'd love to hear about whatever option you are doing for your hour of code. And just if anybody would like to tell us a little bit about what kind of hour of code you're thinking about doing, you can go ahead and toss it into chat. But if anybody feels like, well, I'm going to do a school-wide one, we'd love to hear about that too. Uh, let's see. So Katie just mentioned in chat, do you recommend having the whole class do the same hour of code tutorial, tutorial or letting the students each decide? Um, there's a couple of ways to think about that, Katie. Um, I would often suggest that your whole class do the same one. I think that way it becomes a real community learning experience and, and sharing experience too. Um, that's certainly a really good way to do it. And especially if your students, um, if they don't have experience, I would absolutely have them do the same one. And even if they are experienced, I think I would choose something that that they all could tackle um, as, as a group. I think that's a really good way to do it. So, but there might be some other ways that you might want to approach that too. I know I have heard some teachers who have chosen different ones, but most of the time we'd recommend that you choose the tutorial they go through. So when you're thinking about choosing the right hour of code, we do have a table here that you can take a look at to really get an idea of which ones need no coding experience. Maybe there's a beginner, less than a year, intermediate and advanced. You can see the grade levels that we recommend as well. And you can access this, uh, this chart at codehs.com slash hoc underscore choose underscore tutorial. And we can go ahead and toss that link into chat as well. So preparing to run an hour of code. So as we start to think about how to prepare to run an hour of code, I'd say the first thing we really want to think about is, have you chosen your, your, uh, your tutorial? That's something you'll want to take a look at first. And I would recommend too that teachers definitely make sure you have an account. You don't have to have a CodeHS account to do Hour of Code. But I would always recommend it, uh, teachers, so you can, you know, experience more of the platform and see what else is out there. So again, I just wanted to throw this in there one more time, just in case you do need an account. I did see we have some new account users, uh, so it's a new educator account. So welcome to the CodeHS family. Once you are a CodeHS educator, uh, you are always a CodeHS educator. You're a part of our family. So thank you for joining. Now, as you're getting started, there's a couple of things to think about. So, and this is prior to running your hour of code. So you will want to do this before next week rolls around uh, or before the day that you want to do the activity with your students. There's a couple of ways you can do this. First of all, students do not have to have a CodeHS account to participate in a CodeHS hour of code. They can absolutely go to this page, this codehs.com slash hour of code, and they can choose 
any of these and start the course um, by simply clicking a button. So truly, if your students wanted to come here and try these, they could do this on their own. The one thing that happens when they do that is that their progress is not saved. If they are not logged in, they can't save their progress. And so that's a really big, important distinction that I wanted to point out. If they just start a tutorial, even as they progress through these different activities, if you can see my mouse at the very bottom of the screen, you'll notice that um, as they progress through those, their progress won't be saved. They'll actually have to copy and paste the code to save that if they want to. So logged out, they can absolutely participate, but that part or that um, that will not save. So they can certainly do that if they have a CodeHS account. And if this is something where you feel like, yeah, I think we might come back to CodeHS if you're a brand new educator uh, with us, you could certainly create a section and enroll your students. Or if you already have a section created, you could certainly assign the activity to that section. So what do I mean by that? From the Hour of Code page, I can click on Assign. So let's say I want to do Hour of Code with programming with Carol the dog. I can click on Assign, and then I can choose the course that I want to assign that to. It's that easy. You can absolutely customize an existing course to include the Hour of Code tutorial. Oops, get back to the slide deck. There we go. So a couple of ways to do that. If you'd like more guidance on that, you can absolutely let us know. We'll show you a couple of ways to get more help on that. Um, yeah, so Thomas asked, do we need to make accounts for students? If you, if your students do not have an account, but you'd like them to be able to save their progress or save their projects, um, they could absolutely, you could walk them through creating an account. Super easy to do. We've got some resources that can help with that. And I would have them create it. I would not necessarily create those myself. I did that even with middle school kids. I would have them create their own account. Okay, so some things that you will need, some things to keep in mind is you may want, and I'm going to maybe stress this part, you will want some headphones or some earbuds. Often what you're going to see uh, with the Hour of Code is that students will be working through those activities on their own, or even if you're going through the activities as an entire group, they may go back, they may want to listen to a video again, or if they're doing Generating Beats Hour of Code, you're going to hear a lot of noise. <laughs> you may want some hear ed headphones or earbuds for them. Another thing to keep in mind, there's a couple of extra little requirements or one extra requirement for a couple of the Hour of Codes. So Hour of Code class set up for React Native mobile apps and apps with JavaScript. Okay, those are two different tutorials that we have where students can create a mo simple mobile app. In order to see what that looks like on a mobile device, they will want to have access to a smartphone. If you don't want everybody to have access to that smartphone, you can always use, have one, maybe one student in a group have access to a smartphone, and that smartphone will need to have the Expo app downloaded. Um, I'm not certain, I th think that might, I don't know if that works on maybe a mini iPad also. I can't remember if I've ever tried that, um, but you definitely have a few options there. So something to keep in mind with these two particular Hour of Code tutorials. Also, we wanted to give you some other resources that you might be able to use. So we wanted to give you also a sample intro slide deck as well. Um, so if you can click on codehs.com slash whatever it was, HOC underscore teacher underscore slides, you're going to see this slide deck that we have available for you. You will have, this will be in view only, so you can make a copy of it. And this is going to be a great way to get kids excited about what is coding? What can I do with coding? And why does it matter to me? So often what you're going to find is kids just don't know what they would do with coding. They don't think they need it. Um, I come from a very rural area. And often I'll have kids who want to go back to the farm and they say, what am I going to do with coding? And then we have a discussion about how tractors work these days and it's all about coding and GPS and all of that. So we have this resource for you to use as well. Oops, there we go. 
There's the updated resource. <laughs> and a few other things you're going to want to keep in mind. And this is where I'm actually going to take us back out to the Hour of Code page one more time. You'll definitely want to complete the Hour of Code tutorial before your event. So when you are browsing through this, you can also complete these activities by simply clicking on Start Course and you can browse through them and walk through the entire activity yourself. Now, another really important link here is the lesson plan link. Whenever you see us refer to a teacher guide or a lesson plan for the Hour of Codes, this is where you'll find those on this Hour of Code page. So a lesson plan is going to look something like this. It's gonna give you suggestions for what you can do before your Hour of Code, tell you what you're going to be doing during the Hour of Code, and some tips. Um, this also gives you a direct link to the Hour of Code activity. So you can see here, if you want your students to do the Intro to CS JavaScript um, or with the Carol the Dog uh, Hour of Code, you can give them this link. This is the link that a logged out student could use to access this Hour of Code. The other important thing that I'll show you here You've got some suggested discussion questions, which is another great way to get kids engaged. And notice suggested solutions. And I will say that these may not necessarily always match what the kids do, but this is a little bit of security for you as the teacher. If you're not certain, uh, maybe about all those commands that you're seeing. So, all right. And again, that's the lesson plan link here at codehs.com slash hour of code. So definitely work through any of these um, hour of codes that you might like to. And definitely work through it at least before you get into the activity that day. You can absolutely download and print that lesson plan. You don't have to leave it online. I know for myself, I would have it in front of me. It definitely is a little bit more of a, just a, a piece of security <laughs> that you have that in front of you that day. And take a look at those discussion questions that you see. There may be some specific discussion questions that are very relevant to the topic that you've chosen for your Hour of Code tutorial. And this is, again, a good way to get kids thinking about how is coding relevant to my life? What did they think about coding before they started? And what do they think about coding after they've gone through the activity? Does the hour of code activity you've chosen have a handout? So that's something else you might want to look at. Several of the activities, like the uh, Tracy the Turtle activity, have handouts that you can use. You'll find all of those links on the guides as well. And I would definitely have those printed off. If you have any that are drawing or art related, but absolutely print those off or have a scratch paper available. Sometimes it's really helpful for kids to draw their designs out. Oops. And also find those solutions on the teacher guides. So remember when you get the teacher guide, they have suggested solutions there as well. So really nice way for teachers to have the solutions ready to go, especially if you're not experienced with computer science. And I will say, as a transplant into the field of computer science, I worked backwards from the solutions often. So Hour of Code videos, you can absolutely learn about the CodeHS IDE by working through those tutorials. You will see in each of those that there are, let me jump back over here, that you'll see these little video icons. This is a great way to learn about the activity. and. You'll also see as students get into the activity, here's an example of what our coding IDE looks like. There's a small docs tab on the right hand side. This is going to be a great place to go for additional help about the code. So this is great for students and for teachers alike. And you can see here another, uh, we've just highlighted a little bit in a bigger picture here where the docs tab is. and. If you click on the More tab, you're actually able to sh get the shareable UL URL for the project that your kids create. And we have a link here, codehs.com slash student resources, that will actually take you to an entire knowledge base of articles with a ton of different resources for your students and for you. 
So some additional tips, allow students to work at their own pace. Definitely give them at least 45 minutes to complete the tutorial. Might be plenty of time for some, but it also gives them a lot of time to experiment and encourage that experimentation. Ask problem solving questions, encourage them to collaborate with their peers. And it's always good to pause for full class clarifications and discussions. Um, I, I think 45 minutes can often be a long stretch of kids working. It's good to take some time in there to check in with kids, see how they're doing, maybe actually go through one of the videos together. And then at the end, make sure you're sharing out, let kids have some time to share what they've done, maybe do a gallery walk and really be proud of what they've done. Really, you know, be happy for their successes. So we have a few other ways to engage your students during CS Ed Week. We actually have several live Hour of Code workshops starting next week. On uh, December 5th, we have Generating Art with Code, and that is scheduled from 2.30 to 3.45 CT, so Central Time. Uh, we have Coding in Music on December 6th, and also on December 6th, we have an Upper Elementary uh, Hour of Code, Design a Drawing App with Scratch. Creating Virtual Worlds is December 7th, and Turtle Graphics with Tracy the Turtle on December 8th. And we have another elementary one, a lower elementary, this time on December 8th, called Program a Story in Scratch Junior. These are amazing live workshops. We have speakers that come in for the workshops, and then we walk your class through an hour of code um, tutorial that you see here. If you'd like to register yourself in your classes, you can browse to codehs.com slash HOC underscore resources to do so. And I do believe, MR, correct me if I'm wrong, these are being recorded. And yeah, perfect. That's so correct. You, yep. Excellent. So if you can't make it at this time, you can absolutely grab the recording and walk through this afterwards too. We're, we're still there for you and your students. And we have a ton of different resources uh, that go along with Hour of Code. So we thought we're going to just put all these, curate these on one slide for you. So again, you can get to all of these Hour of Code resources from that link at the top, uh, codehs.com slash HOC underscore resources. We've got the choosing the right tutorial chart. We have a teacher guide, an admin guide, a parent guide. And if you haven't checked out the Coding in the Wild blog, it's pretty cool. The Coding in the Wild blog is a great place to come to see a bunch of different careers that people can use coding with. And really, I don't know that there's too many careers where you don't use coding anymore. But this is a great place to come to show kids what are you looking, uh, what do you want to do in your life outside of school? Well, let's see how coding ties into that. So this is a great site for that. This is definitely something I used also, and a lot of CTE teachers use as well. And you can, again, access all those tutorials at codehs.com slash HOC. And we have a link for you for any help that you might need. Uh, our support team is amazing. I do not know how they answer support calls as fast as they do. But if you need help at all, just browse to codehs.com slash support and somebody will get back to you so fast. So they are definitely the fastest way to get help. And that is the content that we have for you tonight. Do we have any questions? Oh, MR mentioned, yep, or use that blue chat bubble. Um, so if you're in the platform, I don't know if I'm in a place where I'm going to see it. Oh, yep, I sure do. See a little blue chat bubble. And this is going to be a great place to send a quick message. And they are fast. If you'll notice here, our usual reply time, under 10 minutes. They're speedy. <laughs> I don't know how they do it. <gasps> Any lots other of coffee. Yeah, lots of coffee. <laughs> gonna... um, I did have one. We had a couple questions about um, devices. So can you talk a little bit about what devices are um you know, supported on Code HS or what, 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 what's the best way to, what devices are compatible with Code HS? Sure, absolutely. Um, so Chromebooks are a great device. Any device that is able to have a browser on it, and the preferable browser is going to be uh, a Chrome, 
Firefox, Safari. If you've got Internet Explorer, please get rid of that one. <laughs> you want to use something other than that. But anything that has a browser, you really don't need to install anything. There's no plugins, no add-ons that are needed. Chromebooks are fabulous devices for this. Um, so definitely Chromebooks. I was a Chromebook school and Code HS was the reason I could teach coding. So if you are uh, if you are one to one with iPads or iPads are your major device, that might be a little bit challenging with some of the different activities. So you might want to run through that beforehand with the iPad to see how that works. Um, but that might be a little bit tricky. But other than that, um, you should be able to use any device that has a an up to date browser. Um, the unplugged activities, just to make sure everybody saw that one. Yeah, you shouldn't need a device at all for the unplugged activities. Those will use, um, those are just pronouns and manipulatives like MR mentioned. If we do happen to have any elementary folks in here, um, I believe those two, the lower elementary will use Scratch Junior. Upper elementary uses Scratch. And there are, uh, let's see, Scratch Junior is an app and Scratch can be accessible online. Other questions? Awesome. Oh, cool. Thank you, Robin. We'll definitely share that with her. Some love for our support team. They are amazing. I'm telling you, they save me on a daily basis. <laughs> so, anything else? And we would love to know what you all do with your students. So feel free to reach out to us, drop us a message. Um, you can always let the support team know and they'll pass it along as well. And remember, you can either get in touch with support uh, by heading here, or you can click that chat bubble. And that's going to be a great way to chat with them. All right. And I've definitely taken us two time and then some. So if you've got any other questions, definitely let us know. But otherwise, feel free to uh, register for another webinar. We are running this webinar again on Thursday. So if you've got other questions, definitely pop into that. Or we'd love to see you at one of our uh, Hour of Code Live events. What do you suggest us to start for our students? So they will, ah, uh, so if they're brand, brand new, well, what I might do, let's just take a quick peek. What I would do is definitely stick to the beginning, uh, beginner ones, if they are very, very new to coding. Um, definitely check out that chart as well. Um, but there's a lot of fun ones in here. I think um, where you, you know, you as you as the teacher, definitely know your students pretty well by this point in the year. Um, I would take a look at some of these that you think they might be interested in. Generating beats with code never fails. That one is so much fun. Absolutely one of my favorites. If you've got some artistic kids in there, and I think all kids can be very creative, uh, Hour of Code with Generating Art with Code is pretty great as well. Um, we can definitely give you some more recommendations too. If you'd like to chat about any of those, we can certainly send those through support. Oh, cool. Katie, that's awesome. <laughs> I've emailed support over seven times in the past 24 hours and they are crazy fast. We are going to pass that along. They love hearing that we that they're getting their problems taken care of. So I agree. They are so fast. I <laughs> don't know how they do it. All right. I think if there are no other questions, we'll go ahead and wrap up for this evening. Again, I just want to thank you so much for spending, choosing to spend your time with us to learn about Hour of Code. If we can be of any assistance at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. And we truly, truly do hope that we get to see you at one of our Hour of Code events. So check those out. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful evening and have a wonderful CSN week. <laughs>